The battery is increasingly important to the proper operation of the vehicle's various electronic systems. So what is the best way to test the battery to see if it's able to meet those responsibilities? Let's find out in today's edition of The Trainer. Today's edition of The Trainer is brought to you by Autel. For more information, visit www.autel.com. We all know that batteries don't last forever and should be tested regularly to ensure proper starter operation and peak electrical system performance. After all, the battery is the heart of the vehicle's electrical systems. The first step in testing a battery is verifying its state of charge, or SOC, by measuring the open circuit voltage across the battery's cable connections, top post or side post. Place your meter leads directly at the battery posts, if possible, rather than the battery cable ends to ensure accuracy. Many of us were taught that a fully charged battery should read 12.6 volts, that is 2.1 volts for each of the six cells that make up the battery assembly. But because of today's high efficiency designs, those numbers have changed. A conventional flooded lead acid battery like this one should read about 12.7 volts, while an absorbed glass mat battery or AGM battery should read about 13 volts. And oh, by the way, an AGM battery is still a lead acid battery, just a different configuration. It's also very likely that your reading is going to be significantly higher if the vehicle was just brought into the shop. This is typically referred to as a surface charge and should be let off before you take your actual SOC or state of charge voltage measurement. Carter, engineered quality. To learn more, visit www.carterengineered.com. If you measure 10.5 volts or less, there is really no need to continue with any further testing. The battery has a failed cell and it needs to be replaced. The first test I'd like to share is the one recommended by BCI, that's the Battery Council International and it's a load test on the battery using a carbon pile load tester like this one. Many shops are still using this tried and true testing method, but the question is, are they doing it correctly? Before we can perform this test, the battery must be fully charged. According to the BCI specifications, that means a well-rested voltage of 12.6. But what does well-rested mean? Well, what that means is that even after sitting for 24 hours since it last saw a charge, the battery is still reading 12.6 volts. It's also important to test directly at the battery, which requires disconnecting it from the vehicle. But before you do so, install a memory saver like this one to ensure that the memories of the various control modules remain intact. And if the battery is a side post design, be sure to use the proper adapters to ensure a good, clean connection between the battery and the tester. The load test is designed to mimic the electrical loads placed on the battery by the vehicle. And rapid heat buildup can occur in the battery, especially if the load is applied for too long. This could result in damage to the battery, even the possible chance of an explosion, so always make sure that you wear the proper personal protective equipment. A full face shield like this one offers a lot more protection than safety glasses alone. To perform the test, first determine the cold cranking amperage, or CCA, rating of the battery. This information is usually located on the battery label. Connect the tester and apply a load equal to one half the CCA rating for 15 seconds and note the voltage. 
conventional lead acid batteries should remain above 9.6 volts, while AGM and EFB batteries should remain above 10.1 volts. Another common testing method is the use of a handheld conductance tester like the Autel BT608. Conductance testers work by sending a low frequency AC voltage through the battery, which allows the tool to measure just how much available plate material is still contained within the battery. The advantage to this test is that the battery need not be fully charged, but it is critical that you input the correct information into the tool, especially battery construction type. Improperly identifying the battery type is a common mistake. So be sure you check to see if the battery is a conventional lead acid design, an AGM design, or an enhanced flooded battery or EFB. To perform this test, connect the tester to the battery and follow the prompts. These testers also allow you to test the starting and charging systems, and most allow you to print out the test results to share with your customer. Just as with our previous test, a good clean connection between the tool and the battery is critical to ensuring accurate test results. If you get a failed test message or error code on the tester, try repositioning the test clamps to see if you can obtain a better reading. If you continue to get an error message or replace battery message that you're questioning, then you may need to remove the cable ends and test directly on the battery terminals. The final method today that I want to show you for testing a battery uses your digital storage oscilloscope. Now I generally don't use the scope if the state of charge is less than 12.4 volts, but even so, the scope can allow me to perform the test quickly, gain a lot of information in the capture that I'll get, and it gives me a visual that I can share with my customer to more easily explain the test results. To perform this test, connect one channel of your scope to the battery and set your voltage scale to allow for up to a 20 volt reading. Connect a high amp probe to the second channel and place it around either the negative or positive cables, whichever is the easiest to access. Set your time base to 500 milliseconds per division. And for your trigger, select the single trigger function on your scope. Further set your trigger by selecting falling slope and a voltage level just a little bit less than the battery's open circuit voltage. This will allow you to set up the scope to automatically start the trace and you will capture everything you need on one screen. Start the engine and allow it to run for a few moments before you shut it down. Now we can take time to look at the capture and see what information it holds. Here's what to look for. If you did everything right, you should have a pattern that looks something like the one you see here. Now let's focus on the battery testing portion of this capture. That's the red trace, that's channel one. That's the one we connected directly to the battery, just like we would our voltmeter. You can see the blue dot represents our trigger point. Everything to the left of that is open circuit voltage of the battery. Again, no different than just connecting our voltmeter to the terminals. And this gives us a state of charge reading for the battery. If it's less than 12.4 volts, it's probably a good idea to charge the battery and then reperform this test. After all, a battery that's undercharged just can't deliver like it should. Now we told the scope that we wanted it to start capturing the pattern when it saw the voltage fall below 12 volts. Now and you can see there's a small drop and then a huge drop. What's happening here is that we hit the key to run and then start. And that's what you see is the two individual stops. Now why is the one on the second one so huge? Well, you have to remember just how fast your scope is sampling that voltage input. It's in milliseconds. It's faster than a spark plug fires. So what you're seeing here at that peak, that lower peak, is what we call inrush voltage. This is that millisecond of time, that amount of voltage drop that occurs when that starter is working its absolute hardest. 
it's got to turn get itself turning over and it's working against the engine all that mass inertia of the engine to get that moving so that's what you see here in that inverse voltage that's the amount of voltage drop that occurs at its maximum workload and i don't want you to confuse that with the loaded voltage specifications that we've been talking about earlier this is something you're seeing in a brief moment of time and is not representative of the load capability of the battery alone however if you see that number drop below 8.6 volts or so that's a good uh, idea to keep testing the battery. You probably have a problem with it. Now, as we move on, you'll see there's gonna be a slight sweep upward. This is where the starter motor is engaged. It's turning, it's getting the engine turning over faster and faster. And then finally, you see this abrupt rise up where the engine is now running and the alternator, alternator is starting to charge the battery. And if you look closely, you can see a small peak and then it drops and settles. This is not unusual. A lot of modern automobiles have uh, computer controlled charging strategies and initially may charge the battery at a rate of 15, 16, even 17 volts for a brief period of time to replenish what we took out. Continuing to follow the voltage pattern, you can see where it begins to stabilize and now we have our uh, battery voltage or our charging voltage system stabilized and we can compare that to the specifications as well. Now that takes care of the voltage pattern. Let's take just a couple of things I want to point out in the current pattern. That's the green pattern below. Let's see what that has to tell us. Again, this is now current. Look at that huge drop that corresponds with the inrush voltage. That's called inrush current. And it's the same thing. This is how much current it took to get that starter energized, to start getting it to move, to start getting the engine to move maximum workload and you're only going to see that for a brief moment of time as you can see in the pattern it quickly rises back up to a more reasonable level that level the second level is what you probably see when you're looking at a, stir, a starter current draw test you can see there's a few little ripples in that pattern again as the engine begins to pick up speed once the engine runs it has a huge rise you can see that huge increase in current being put back into the battery that quickly settles out the key thing I want you to look at here is down towards the end of that pattern. We don't want to see any more than, oh, a three to five amp positive charge rate. If we see anything more than that, then the alternator is working harder than it should, which indicates that the battery is not as good as it should be. So if you see that, that just might be the cause for a customer that comes back repeatedly with, say, alternator complaints or charging system complaints. Take a look at this on your scope, and you just might find the problem that way. Now there's a lot more information in that pattern. We don't have time for it all today, but I invite you to check out the video that I have in the video description below or above or to the right or left, depending on where you're viewing this, uh, how to number 18. And it'll tell you even more about what you can see in this one simple capture. The three testing methods that I've shared today all have their strengths and weaknesses. So what is the best way to test the battery? I think the best way to test the battery is the test that is done correctly using the resources at hand. For more information on any of the Autel diagnostic tools that I've used in today's video or any of the other fine Autel products, visit www.autel.com. And as always, thanks for watching.